This is the word of the Lord. He was drowning, gasping for air. The wind gusted and the water churned. Caught up in the elements of the world, Peter cried out, Lord, save me. Lost in the moment, Peter felt nothing but panic, nothing but the blanket of waves closing in around him. He needed a hand, a real hand of flesh and blood to reach out and grab hold of him, to save him. Where was Jesus? Where was his Lord? This is the very question which led Peter into such a precarious situation to begin with. The whole day had been exhausting. In the morning, news had reached them that John the Baptist had been executed. John was Jesus' cousin. Not only that, he was a prophet from God. It all seemed so senseless. How could this be a part of God's plan? John's death had hit them all rather hard, but perhaps none more than Jesus. He led Peter and the rest of the disciples to a remote location. They needed to get away and pray. But crowds continued to follow them all the way to the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Peter was annoyed. They only thought of themselves. Cure my blindness. Make me walk again. Show me a miracle, Jesus. Could they not see what Jesus was going through? What they all were going through? Send them home, Peter had suggested. After all, it's dinner time and they need to eat. It was a good excuse. It made sense. Jesus had other plans. He had them gather all the food they could from the crowd. They ended up with five loaves of bread and two fish. Then, taking the bread in his hands, Jesus broke it and gave thanks to God. Peter still wasn't sure how it had happened, but Jesus fed the entire crowd of over 5,000 people with that little bit of food. And... After the food had been distributed, they had 12 baskets of leftovers. They had more than they had started with. Of course, as had been the pattern that day, there was no time to ponder the miracle. Jesus immediately commanded the disciples to get into their boat and start crossing the sea. Jesus stayed behind to disperse the crowd and pray. As usual, there was no clear plan. It was one of those days. It felt like they were constantly reacting. They would make plans, and then those plans would abruptly change. Physical exhaustion was added to the emotional and mental stress he had been feeling since morning. No rest today, Peter had thought as he climbed into their boat. The disciples fought against the wind and waves for hours, trying to get to the opposite shore, just as Jesus had commanded. Peter's hands became raw from gripping the oars. His arms were tired. Yet the disciples had made headway in their little boat. In Peter's estimation, they were three or four miles away from the shore, away from Jesus, away from their Lord. Where was Jesus? How was he going to meet them on the other side? How long would they have to wait for him? Suddenly, in the distance, Peter could make out what seemed to be a ghost-like figure hovering over the water. As the ghost drew near, Peter and his companions became overwhelmed by fear. Peter had battled, battled the elements before. He was a fisherman after all, but this was different. This was not normal. Amidst the difficulty of the day's journey, the uncertainty of their Lord's plans, and the onslaught of the wind and waves, Peter was seeing things. Was he going crazy? Peter was straining, straining to figure out what he was looking at. His eyes were under attack. He leaned forward, gripping the edge of the boat as his eyes fought against the darkness. The wind whistled in his ears, making it difficult to hear anything, let alone the voices of his companions. The constant rocking of the boat disrupted Peter's equilibrium. The waves smacking against the side of the boat added to the din and reminded Peter of his own exhaustion. Slowly, the strange being began to grow larger and take shape. Was Peter seeing the shape of a man? It sure seemed like it but he was afraid to commit. He was afraid to listen to the feeling in his gut. Yet he was worn out. But this was real. Suddenly the ghost spoke. Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter knew that voice. Yet nobody likes to be taken for a fool, and Peter was no exception. He was skeptical. After all, people don't walk on water. 
So he issued the ghost a challenge. Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. In response came a reply which Peter had not anticipated. Come. Peter's mind raced. Come? As in walk on the water? The elements were still in full force. Yet Peter found his hands reaching for the rim of the boat to pull himself up. He looked at the ghost and suddenly the image sharpened. It was Jesus, and he was walking on water. Peter swung his feet over the edge of the boat. His senses sharpened. He was no longer tired. He could no longer feel the rocking of the boat or the wind whistling in his ears. In that moment, Peter could only see Jesus. Then, suddenly and without reason, Peter looked at his hands and saw that they were no longer gripping the side of the boat. His feet were wet. In that moment, he realized that he was inexplicably standing on the water. What had for a moment faded into the background came rushing back. He could feel the waves at his feet. The wind whistled in his ears. All the events of the day came rushing back, and he found himself caught in the chaos of that moment. He lost sight of Jesus and remembered, people don't walk on water. That's when Peter began to sink. He was drowning, gasping for air. The wind gusted in the water churn. Caught up in the elements of the world, Peter cried, Lord, save me. Lost in the moment, Peter felt nothing but panic, nothing but the blanket of waves closing in around him. He needed a hand, a real hand of flesh and blood to reach out and grab hold of him, to save him. Where was Jesus? Where was his Lord? Was he really there? Were his words true? Ghosts and imaginary people cannot provide salvation. Words may provide comfort, but in the end, they are just words. All too often, perception becomes reality, and Peter's reality was wind and wave, panic and fear. The elements of the world were on the move, and they were swallowing Peter whole. Peter had a real problem, and he needed a real Savior. And a real Savior came. Just as Peter was about to slip beneath the surface of the water, real hands of flesh and blood took hold of him. Peter was pulled from the onslaught of the elements and came face to face with Jesus. As Peter was pulled into the boat, he couldn't help but stare at his Savior. Jesus stood there looking at Peter as though he had been in the boat with him all along. The wind had calmed and the sea was suddenly quite still. The challenges of the day and consequent exhaustion melted away. All was as it should be. Peter was in the presence of God. He was safe. Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? The words stung, but they also rang true. Why did I ever doubt him? Peter thought. It is easy to find oneself caught in the moment, paralyzed by exhaustion, confusion, and doubt. Tragedy, conflict, and unexpected circumstances assault our emotions and wreak havoc on our plans. Day-to-day -day responsibility, although good, can be mentally and physically draining. Like Peter, as we live out our days, it is easy to feel like a wave being tossed around by the elements of the world. In our exhaustion, Jesus speaks. Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Jesus bids us to come find comfort and rest in his word. He is here with us right now, right here, because his word is here. There's no reason to be anxious or afraid, no matter what you think or feel, no matter what your circumstances, because God is with you. Yet exhaustion leads to confusion and doubt. Jesus, are you real? I mean, are you really here, present in my life? This all seems too good to be true. After all, people don't walk on water. Prove you're real. Do something. We live in a culture that is fixated on outward circumstances and does not value a relationship with God. But then again, this isn't anything new. This is the way it has been since sin entered the world. We label the problems in our life as the day we're having. Those people who only think of themselves bad planning, or even bad weather. Words without action feel empty. The same is true when we hear God's word. 
With you, Jesus, it's always words, just words. I need more than words. I need a real hand of flesh and blood to reach out and save me. Do you see the real problem? The problem isn't a bad day, external circumstances, or even those people. The problem is the condition of our own hearts. We hear God's word, yet doubt that they're true. We insist it's up to us to change the world, others, and yes, even ourselves. Like Peter, we lose sight of Jesus and find ourselves sinking beneath the waves of our own exhaustion, anxiety, and fear. And yet God does not abandon us. He is with us, even as we cry out in distress, Lord, save me. Do you see Jesus reaching out to you with real hands of flesh and blood? Because that's exactly what he is doing as he extends his hands on the cross. When Jesus says, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid, he bids you come to the cross, to the foot of the cross. See his arms reaching out for you. Even as your sinful heart says, it's all up to me, Jesus says, Father, forgive them. The winds will blow and the waters will rise. Exhaustion leads to doubt. Doubt leads to fear and panic. Yet in the midst of these elements stands Jesus, the crucified one, the one who walks on water even as the wind and waves blow all around us. In his presence, all becomes still. In his presence, we realize how foolish we were to doubt him. Here at the foot of the cross, God acts to bring even greater power to his comforting words. Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. And as we hear these words, we begin to realize that in Jesus' presence, we can walk where nobody else dares to walk. Why? Because he is with us. There's nothing to fear. We can be different. Consider those God has placed in your life. Do you see them sinking, caught up in the elements of the world? Have they lost sight of Jesus? Because of Jesus, we can show compassion towards those who lash out at us in their exhaustion. Because of Jesus, we can be patient with those who are lost and confused. Because of Jesus, we can lead those who doubt to the one who extends his hand of flesh and blood to them in their time of need. To those caught in the moment, paralyzed by exhaustion, confusion, and doubt, we can echo Jesus' own words. Take heart. There is nothing to fear.